it's so sad. You ate up all that turkey Thursday and, you, and, and had leftovers and everything, but I greet you in the love of the Lord. Um, yes, our practice at six. We've been having wonderful practices, but everyone hasn't come yet, and we're waiting for the voice uh, for Brother Roly and others to join, because the men really need you. And we thank the Lord for your presence here, and our guests, Dr. Tony, I know he's bringing the candle at two in. So we want to welcome our guests that are here under the call. Thank you for inviting my sister and lovely niece, I believe. We thank the Lord for them. I just get a joy when they're here in the front because they're always smiling. And for those that we see in the back, my sister, in fact, has come all the way from um, um, here, airport, right? <laughs> and different ones that are here. We greet you in the love of the Lord. This is Bethany Christian Center. Our doors are always open. Amen? Amen. And we thank you for coming. Many of you saw us first on YouTube or on the website that we have. It was up there. You got familiar with us. But it's nothing like being in fellowship in the presence of the Lord, person to person. Amen? Amen. Amen. You could stay at home. You could watch your TV evangelist. But there's something about coming together, congregating together, and worshiping the Lord together. Amen? In spirit and in truth. And this morning, I thank the Lord that we are in, you can put my theme up there, Chris, now. <laughs> this morning I'm going to speak to you about a time and season for everything. Amen? A time and season for everything. And look around you. What are we celebrating right now? Autumn. Autumn. Let me say Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're celebrating fall. And you know, for me, it's the most beautiful time of the year. How many love fall? How many? Yeah. Particularly here where we live. We are blessed with four seasons. Spring, definitely. You can tell when spring's here. Summer, and you can tell when summer coming. We have all the ACs and fans running. Then we have fall and autumn. And then we have winter. We're not in winter yet, but we felt it this morning. How many have saw ice on your cars this morning? We definitely have four seasons. And we definitely have seasons in our life. Seasons of our life, Pastor Fran. We have a spring season of our life when we're young, child, innocent, going through your adolescence, going through just early stages of your life and planning what you're going to do. You have summer when you're the most productive, when you are out there working and trying to make a life and trying to get your career on the go and, and setting what you're going to have as, as goals in your life, buying, accumulating things. Then you have the fall seasons of your life. What is that, Sister Oh, I think I'm in my fall. AARP, when you're retired. <laughs> when you're in your seasons of fall, and you can reflect back to the spring and summer of your life. And then some are in the winter of their lives. And with winter comes a lot of thought about what you've done with your life. The book that I'm going to read speaking out of this morning is the book of Ecclesiastes. And those of you that have your Bibles, you can go there, or your iPhone, or your iPad. We live in such an electronic age. Now, there's no excuse, amen? There's no excuse for you not to have a copy of the Word in your hand. So I'll let you look at that. Ecclesiastes. What is Ecclesiastes about? Well, the writer, let me give you a little bit of background. Ecclesiastics in Hebrew, actually the word is teacher or preacher, right, Sister Vicki? She's our Phil Am uh, facilitator, and I, I really enjoy her messages. Or coming together in assembly. But here, we believe the writer is to be King Solomon. Others may say, theologians might say, it might be another well learned person who knew about King Solomon, but when you study Ecclesiastes, you find out that it is so Solomon, King Solomon in every way. One can say it's an essay, one can say it's an apologetics for their June, a defense on the life and faith 
and living in a generous, God-surrounded life. By pointing out first, the writer points out when we study the book of Ecclesiastes, the faults and gloom of life without God in your life. You can have a lot of things, but without God in your life, it's a dead end. And the word that you see repeatedly, repeatedly in the book of Ecclesiastes, in your translation, might say vanity. Vanity. In other words, meaningless. Meaningless. It is meaningless without God in your life. He writes as if God, when you start reading Ecclesiastes, it's almost as if he writes as if God doesn't matter. So what purpose of profit has a man for all that he has labored and worked and accumulated when he toils under the sun if he doesn't have God? And the answer you'll find later when you finish studying Ecclesiastes in this last chapter, almost 12, 13, it says, fear God, keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. When you read through the whole gloom of Ecclesiastes, you come back almost to the end and you find out that there is purpose when you have a Christ-centered life. Amen? Amen? When you have God in your life, when you know Him, do you know Him? And then also, here's another little background on the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity, the word vanity or meaningless, appears 35 times in 29 verses. Vanity, vanity. I think about vanity. We had vanity here a few years ago, right? Amen. <laughs> Somebody was, what are you talking about, Sister Fred? She's, she was transformed. Vanity, some of you knew her who used to run with Prince. But you know she's transformed, gave her life to God. And she stood here and preached salvation. Her life was transformed. And when I think and I see the word vanity, it reminds me of, of her and her transformed life. Vanity. Another phrase you'll see in Ecclesiastic that appears like 29 times is under the sun. Under the hand. Not under the sea. Under the, under the sun. I'm going to go a little mermaid there. Under the sun. Under the sun. Everything's under the sun. And you can actually obtain two messages from this book alone. And it's Vanity or meaningless of life under the sun, a life pure, purely from an earthly perspective, unbelievers not having God in their life. That's one message you can grasp from Ecclesiastes. Another is the importance of fearing God and keeping his commandment. So when you study this, remember those two things. Another is the importance of serving God through your life. And this message the preacher would direct, especially to the youth, in chapters 11, verse 9 and 12, 1. Remember the Creator in the days of the Lord. Remember, not that you can't come to know the Lord when you are elderly, but you can do so much more with your life when you're young. Amen? Amen. And to serve Him with all of your strength. Let's bow our heads as we give praise to the Lord, God Almighty. Heavenly Father, our Father, we come before you right now, Lord, and I ask your blessing and anointing upon your word. As it goes forth and falls in ears and hearts, Lord, let it remain, Lord, and grow, and let the hearers of the word, Lord, have that desire to study and to pursue this even further, dear God, to have a passion for you, a passion in their heart, Lord, to want to just be in your presence always, Lord. I thank you now, Jesus, for all that you've done for us, for all the thanksgivings that you have given us, all comes from your hands. Each and every day we are thankful to you, for everything belongs to you. And now, Lord, as we study the seasons of our life and the time for everything, help us learn to learn more and more, Father. Where we are with you right now, it matters. It matters. We give you all the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You know that God appoints both our birth date and our time of death. 
He knows exactly when it will happen. I have the honor and privilege of officiating a funeral a week ago for Brother Abraham Pascual, Sister Rebecca. Many of you know her. I don't know who Sister Rebecca is. It's a beautiful lady that sits over here, Sister with the short black hair. Brother Abraham grew up with us at Bethany Temple, our first church. He grew up with us. His father and mother were pillars there. And I remember going to Sunday school with him. Throughout the years, you know, he would come. I mean, the last time he was here, maybe a year or so ago, right where the Claudio, he was here. And he reconsecrated his life to the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. You may be out there, but when it gets to the time when you're feeling aches and pains and having trouble with, with physical issues, it's a time to prepare. It's a time to go back. And I'm so grateful. And also that Brother Claudio, is a, you know, testifies that he remembers that time where Abraham got everything in order. So I thank the Lord for that. He knows exactly everything about us. It is said that every eight seconds, every eight seconds, get the talk. Someone dies. And every three seconds, someone is born. Think about it. Even the trees and the flowers and the plants have a time, right? They have a time to bear fruit. They have a time to die, as you see, as we're going into dormancy. Think about it, everything. Here, we're so blessed that we have these beautiful colors. And like a comet flashes across the sky, the brightest it is before it dies. And you know that's something um, that trees do before they go into dormancy for winter and lose all their leaves. They give you the best that they can and the most beautiful color. So as you go home today and you look at those trees, thank the Lord. Rejoice that you are able to see this. We thank the Lord. As we go now to Ecclesiastic, and my text is found, in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. Open your Bible, open your Word, and there is the key scripture up there. And I love this chapter. I love chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to break it down for you verse by verse. And the first verse, there is a time for everything. Amen? Amen. And a season for every activity under heaven. Every and it says there, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. It sounds like a poem. Well, it is. A time to scatter stone, a time to gather them, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, a time to give up, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace. There is a time for everything. There's a time for you to go to bed, and there's a time for you to get up. There's a time for you to eat your breakfast, take your shower, time to get in the car. And those of you that have to go, our baths have to go over the Bay Area, you know, you better get there early or you're going to be stuck. Right, Brother Paul? <laughs> and Sister Veronica. There is a time for everything. How many of you have a wristwatch on your arm right now? Look at it. How many of you have an iPhone? You have your iPad. Get in your car. What time is it? You're planning a trip to LA. Oh, I already know. I need to get there before 2.30. I need to get over the Altamont a certain time. Because there's timing, right? You better know the time. You better know what time it is. What season it is. And I tell you right now, Everything, there is a time 
for it. And we look to verse 2. It says in verse 2, there's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot. We have no control. Do you know you had no control of the day you were born? I'm sorry. You had no control. You were born in the parking lot of a hospital or at home. You had no control. Right? Now, mothers that were carrying that baby, we tried to control it, but we had no control. You had no control of that. We have no control whether you were born into a rich family, wealthy, or a poor family, or middle class. You know, you have no control. No control of the time either of death. We try to linger it as long as we can. We try to make our loved ones comfortable. But when death comes, you have no control. Joel 7 1 says, Is there not an appointed time for man upon the earth? He knew there's an appointed time. In Genesis 21 2, here's exactly. It says, For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had so let spoken to him. Appointed time. God is the only one that has the appointed time. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has control. So as you move along and you read this chapter, you're going to find out that repeatedly, repeatedly, the word a time, a time. Verse 3, let's go to the next section. A time to kill, a time to break down, a time to kill. A time to kill, Pastor Brown, I thought it's in the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Well, thou shalt not premeditate, commit murder. But do you know, killing was allowed in the Bible. Give you a good example. Who did David kill? Was he the enemy? Yes. Oh, yes. And when they took possession of the land, Jericho, they were to go in and do what? Kill. It was more of a cleansing. To kill everything that represented evil. So there is a difference there. And that's a whole other message you could get into. But you are to protect, yes, during the time of war. To protect your family and your country. Many of you or have loved ones or yourself serve in the armed forces and bless those that are doing that because this is a time when we need to remember to pray for our nation amen? amen you can no longer know where the borders are of your enemy my grandnephew Ethan Ethan Torah went to visit his great grandfather and he asked his great grandfather the other day grandpa if you were 19 again would you enlist go to war like he did and he said I'm sorry to say no things are so different now you used to know your enemy you used to wear a uniform they used to wear uniforms on both sides you used to know where the borders were but no longer it's here war is devastating war is everywhere and we as believers and Christians we're fighting a spiritual war right so spiritual battle, you need spiritual weapon. And that's this right here. You better know how to use your weapon when the enemy comes around. You better know how to use the scripture. You better know how to stand on the word. Prayer is wonderful, but praying the word is even more powerful. Amen? Because the enemy can't stand that. It says here, a time to heal. And we need healing. Amen? Amen? Oh yes, everywhere in the Bible where Jesus walked in the New Testament, he healed. And it says in the book of John that the book could not even contain all the miracles that my Lord did when he walked in the earth. And he's still healing today. Amen? amen? If you believe. If you believe. Amen. And have faith. A time for healing. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, By whose stripes we were healed because he took it all on that cross. He shed his precious blood for you and for me that we might have healing. 
and believe and stay close to him. And like the choir sang last Sunday, in the good times, praise the In the bad times, do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all thanks. Amen. We don't thank it because I got healed or I'm, I'm, I'm this or that. You thank him because of who he is. Amen? Amen. He's almighty. God, creator of heaven and earth. And one day, if we're still living, when we hear the sound of the trumpet, we'll be caught up to meeting in the air. Amen? This is a great reunion. A time to tear down. A time to break down. A time to build. you got to tear down something sometimes for it to be rebuilt. Something has to be torn down to the foundation before it can be built on that spot again. Your hearts have to be torn down. Before you came to know the Lord, you had a stony heart. We had a stony heart. How many of you had a stony heart? I'll be first. We even had atheists, right? Where did you? And God had to get a hold of you, right? And remake that heart. Give you a new heart. And here this morning I'm telling you, if you're here with a stony heart, one that says, that's not for me, that's not me, I pray the Holy Spirit to break through, because you need a breakthrough. Amen? You need a breakthrough so that God can take that stony heart and make it a heart of flesh. Amen. Moving on to Ezekiel. I mean, it's oh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 4. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Very poetic. And that's why I love this passage. A time to weep. How many know John eleven thirty five, the shortest verse in the Bible? And what does it say? Jesus wept. Say it again. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He had a time to weep because his beloved friend Lazarus had not. And there's those times that you will shed tears, and that's why they're not grieving. When you're grieving and there's times of bereavement, let it go. Let it go. I know a number of you know that Pastor Bernie and I had to put our little fur pet down. Last week was very hard. Not only had I officiate a funeral, but I had to take that a little member of the family for 13 years almost. And you know what? It hits you like a ton of bricks. It hits you like such a pain. In comparison, I think about when you go through grief and pain and hurt. The Lord says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm -hmm. You'll never know comfort until you have brokenness and grief. And I thank the Lord for all your prayers, for all of you that loved her. I thank the Lord that we can move on. And thank the Lord for those wonderful years. Um, there's a time to weep. There's a time to laugh. What does it say about laughter? It's a medicine, right? You want to know the secret to living long? I said, I don't want to live too long, but everybody else will be gone. <laughs> laughter. Laugh. Find things to laugh about. And be joyous. Amen. There's a time to mourn. Yes, there's a time to mourn. And a time to dance. You know who danced with all his might? King David, when he brought the ark to Jerusalem. It said in 2 Samuel 6, 14 and 15, that David danced before the ark with all of his might. We were singing a song about something. Dance in the river or dance. I don't think that was at all. <coughs> Mike, 
because if it was all our might, we'd probably be shaking this church with all his might. He danced. He danced with all his might that his ephod was floating right up in the air. He danced with all of his might. And in contrast, this same King David, who danced with all of his might, six chapters later, in chapter 12, 14, he mourned the death of his firstborn child, a child that was Sheba, that he had conceived in war. He had committed adultery, not only adultery, but he had had her husband killed, murdered in the front line. But it says that after he mourned, he washed his face, and he went to the temple, and he worshipped. Amen? There's something about when you're grieving and mourning, that you can rise up and give thanks to the Lord for who he is. Amen? Amen. And worship. Draw near to me, he said, and I'll draw near to you. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 5. <coughs> There's a time to scatter or cast away stones, and there's a time to gather them. There's a time to embrace, and there's a time to refrain from embracing. Scattering stones on a field that you're going to cultivate, <clears throat> you want to pick them up because you want to plant a crop. You want to gather them up, and you want to do something with those stones. You either can build a house or you can build a wall. A time to embrace, a time to refrain. When I really study more about this, this is actually having to do this little area right here, scatter stones and embrace and all that, it has to do with your relationship, your desires. There is a time to refrain and there's a time to embrace. And it's wonderful that all this was taken into account by the writer when he wrote this. <coughs> Verse 6, moving on, it says, there's a time to search, a time to give up, a time to keep, a time to throw away. And you know, this is right here, biblical authorization for you to give that stuff away to goodwill. Amen? Right there, give it away. You're looking for something, you can't find it. You're searching and finding. How many of you have been looking for something in the last week? You searched for something. Come on. You couldn't find your phone. You couldn't find your glasses. You couldn't find your wallet. You couldn't find your keys. You were looking and you were searching. And sometimes, you give up, and somebody else will find it for you. Right there. Or have you ever done this? Where are my glasses? Did you take my glasses? Donde están mis lentes? Is that right? There's my Spanish 101. And you're searching, and you're looking. A time to keep, a time to throw away. Material things. How many of you dare to go out there on Black Friday? How many stayed safe in the corners of your house? Amen. You stayed wise. It says um, in Mark 10, 29. I'm going to read that. Matthew, Mark in the New Testament. Mark 10, 29 and 30 says, and here's a good example that the Lord gave us about giving up. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Home. 
Geraldine's brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. He has to come first. Amen? For all those things. And like I said during the funeral, everything is temporary. Everything that you have is just temporary. This right here is a temporary shell. We weren't made, we were created, yes, to live forever, but because of sin, this is temporary. But if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your last breath here, your next breath is with him. Amen? Amen. Just remember that. It's all temporary. It says there are many things we we can try to accumulate and keep. But the best thing that we can have is our faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ. We should cast all of our cares upon him. Give it up to Jesus. Amen? A time to clear out everything of your life that you don't need. As we're going into 2016, take an evaluation of your life. Where are you are right now? And what are you going to change with Jesus' help? Verse 7. Verse 7 says, there's a time to tear or rend. A time to mend. A time to be silent. And a time to speak. Amen. Rent. Tear. It was significant. The Bible says, when you were mourning or grieving, that one would tear his clothing. Remember Mordecai? He tore his clothing. He put ashes on their head as a symbol of grieving and mourning. But there's even a time that was even more awesome than anything else in the Bible. When the world grieved. It's when our Lord went to that cross and he died for my sins and your sins. What happened to the veil in the temple that separated to the Holy of Holies? Who remembers what happened to that veil? That curtain. It was rent. It was torn. From top to bottom. Which would have been an impossible thing for a man to do. Because you know why? That curtain, that veil, was sewn with thread of gold. Beaten gold. Red. And it would have been impossible for a man to tear it with his hand. It had to be the hand of God. Amen? Amen. That opened up that way for us to have access into the Holy of Holies. That we can go before him, Jesus Christ, our high priest, and go before him, no longer needing anyone to speak for us. It says there, a time to mend. When things are broken, you need to mend it. And Jesus is a mender of broken hearts. Amen? Amen. Set chapter 3, to heal the broken hearted. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands if you've ever had a broken heart, but it takes time to heal. Amen? The time you have to go through that broken heart to know what it is in recovery of Jesus Christ. Amen? And it says here, silence. When is the time to be silent? Think of times in your life that you've had to be silent. I know it's hard for children. But we as adults, we who go to school know there is a certain time you are silent. You're expected to be silent. Especially in school, right? If you're talking, you're in grammar school. What were some of the punishments you would get for talking? Alma said sit in the corner. Sit in the corner. Kindergarten. Write sentences. Go to the office. No recess. No recess. Because there's a time to speak. And there's a time to be silent and it's time to speak. And here's a time that we should have highlighted in our Bible. Look to Romans chapter 10. If you're a child of God, 
You should not be ashamed of him, amen? We have missionaries around the world, and today is, as we also focus on mission. But here, in chapter 10 of Romans, verses 9 and 10, it says here, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, amen, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen? For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Amen? It is with your mouth that you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, has come into your heart and transformed you and you made him Lord and King of the thrones of the he has to be Lord of all, or he can't be Lord of all. And then in closing, in the last verse, 8, Ecclesiastic 3, verse 8, there's a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. That's called John 3, 16. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have what kind of life? Everlasting life. Amen. He so loved the world. It's how much did he love was this much. Stretch his arm across him. Across. That's how much. Is there a time to hate? Yes. yes, we can hate. We can hate sin. Amen? But not the sinner. We can hate ISIS, but have love for the soul that's there. We can hate the things that are trying to tear down the work of the Lord. And let's pray much for our Mayor Silva. Amen. Brother Amen. Jim, let's continue praying for our city of Stockton. Amen. Amen. We hate the violence that's going on. We pray for a breakthrough. Amen. Matthew 5, 43, 44 is that we shall love our neighbors. Love our neighbors. That is the greatest commandment. Emotion that we were created with is to love. God is love. Amen? Amen? Let's say that. God is love. God is love. And he wants us to love one another. He wants us to, to take that message. Knowing that all these things that we've studied from one to eight, they all happen in the seasons of our life, in the springtime, summer, autumn, and fall of our life. There's a song that was written in the 60s. In fact, it was 1965. Pastor Tony had just gone into the Air Force. We were fighting a war called the Vietnam War. How many remember that? The Vietnam War. And I tell you right now, it was a time where it was you never knew who was going to come back. But there was a song written by a group. And I thought, oh, I'm going to sing that song in church. Uh -huh. I read the last one. And that song was written by the birds. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There was a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap. And it goes on. A time for everything. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to gain, they say. A time to lose. A time to rend. A time to sow. A time to love. And a time for hate. A time for peace. Yes, yes. They were anti-Vietnam and the peace. I swear, this is the last line they added, it's not too late. 
and I found out that my uncle told me that song is totally against what we stand for. Because they're using it. They're using it as a platform against those that are fighting in the war, those that are giving their lives. And we lost thousands of our young men and women in that war in Vietnam. But I want to read you another verse. It's a song that we used to sing, so we'll remember. Only one life, so soon it will pass. It matters so little, church, how much you may own. The places you've been to or the people that you know. For it all comes to nothing when placed at his feet. It's nothing to Jesus, only memories to keep. You may take all the treasures from far away lands, take all the riches that you can hold in your hand, and take all the pleasures the riches can buy. But what will you have when it's your turn to die? The days pass so swiftly, the months come and go, the years melt away like new fallen snow. Spring turns to summer, summer to fall. Autumn brings winter, then death comes to call. Only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ is going to last. Only one chance to do his will. So give your life to Jesus. Give to Jesus all your days because it's the only life that pays. When you recall, you have but one life. Amen? And that's it. That's in a nutshell. In his time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me the way that you do just what you say in your time. In his time. In his time. He makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time. It's our hands.